All right, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Making Useless Things. This is a little video, podcast, vlog, whatever you want to call it, where I just sit down and I chit chat with you about some of the things that I've been making recently. My name is Gracie. Um, if you haven't been to my YouTube channel before, I just like to say welcome. I hope that you enjoy everything that you're about to watch. All right, so we're gonna get through this to the best of our ability. Um, I am working with a new camera today and I am trying the autofocus feature, which means that the camera lens is constantly moving and it could create, end up creating some sounds that might be a little bit unenjoyable. I'm trying my best not to move to a great extent, but it's also very difficult with the lighting in this room. Um, just the camera is always going to be kind of trying to focus because the lighting is like behind me. So, <laughs> um, we might switch to manual focus halfway through this. So I apologize for anything that looks weird or funky. Um, I did get footage of all of my projects outside of this lighting and stuff. So you can see them in daylight. Um, so what ended up happening, why we're back down here again in front of my messy desk and my messy background is partly due to the fact that my tripod recently broke. Um, I stripped one of the screws on it, the one that helps hold the camera straight up at the proper angle. So once you put a camera on it, it's too heavy and it just falls over and it points to the floor. So great for overhead shots, not so great for podcasting, <laughs> but... Regardless, I hope that um, sitting down and at least trying to use a little bit better quality camera, a little bit better quality mic, that we can have a more enjoyable experience for this podcast. The other little bit of business that I wanted to talk to you guys about concerning the podcast is the last time I did a podcast episode where I sat down and I talked about my projects, you guys really responded to that well, and I think that is more of a the direction that I'm going to go with this year with my YouTube channel, maybe, maybe a vlog here and there, but time really allows me more to do something like this. It's a lot easier to edit. It's a lot more easy to, to just, I enjoy it a little bit more. Vlogging is fun, but I'm kind of finding fulfillment through doing like TikToks and Reels that that is sort of where I'm heading <laughs> in that direction with all of that stuff. We'll get into that later. But first, let's get into the knitting. So I like to always start off with what I have recently cast off and there is not much knitting, but. <laughs> okay, so manual focus has been turned off because it was driving me crazy. Um, and I'm, we're just gonna deal with this, <laughs> whatever it looks like. And if I have to re-record, I re-record. So my most recent finished object is the Excuse Me Dicky by Stephen West. So this is technically my first Stephen West pattern that I've ever made. Um, and I say technically because once upon a time I did knit one of his shawls, mm, oh like probably, probably eight years ago. Well, anyways. Um, but it wasn't ever really finished because I only had one skein of yarn and it just, you know, it was a whole thing. So basically this is just a brioche cowl knit from the top down and I ended up going for an I-cord um, cast on. He actually has you knit an I-cord and then pick up your stitches, but I found that there's still enough stretch to do an I-cord cast on um, for it to get over my head. And then basically all, all you're doing is just different um, decreases and increases to kind of make this funky shape and um, texture, I guess, to your cowl. I love that it is reversible because that's part of um, doing brioche with two colors. It's just the beauty of this stitch. And <clears throat> I have to say, I love this thing. I haven't been able to get any photos of it <laughs> until recently because I have been wearing it all the time. And the biggest like selling point of this cowl is that it lays completely flat over your neck and shoulders. So when you put your coat on, you can zip your coat all the way up 
and you don't have any weird airflow and you don't have any weird gap and your zipper doesn't come undone <laughs> and it is just a lifesaver in the cold weather and i love that i can i can pull it up over my face i can roll it down to have a nice little thing and i tend to wear it so much <laughs> Like once I put it on it stays on for the rest of the day because it's so comfortable. I like just can't I don't know. I just don't take it off and um, People usually ask me are you going somewhere because it looks like I'm dressing up to go outside No, I'm just wearing this because it's warm and comfortable <laughs> but uh, So the yarn that it is knit out of is Malabrigo Rios in peachy which is which was left over from a sweater that I knit a couple years ago. And then this beautiful, beautiful white speckled yarn is from La Bien Ame, which is that beautiful yarn company run by a really wonderful um, yarn dyer. So I picked that skein of La Bien Ame up in North Carolina when I was visiting my brother a few years ago. So it felt really good to finally get around to knitting that up. Anyways, a 10 out of 10 knitting pattern highly suggest if you're looking for something that's super warm and comfortable and also super fun to knit because brioche is just like the most comforting stitch you can ever make next project that is like a half finished project and also like not a finished project um let's get into these little guys so this is um frog and toad just like all of you other knitters out there, I fell madly in love with them when I saw them probably over a year ago on Pinterest. And I just sort of was like, that'll be a great pattern to do someday. Um, and then I just, you know, that pattern really gained traction and people were making it a lot and it started popping up more. And I was like, oh, I could make it for a gift for somebody who's having a baby or something. And then um, I showed the pattern to my mom. She freaked out and she immediately knitted one and it got her totally back into knitting. Uh, so now she's making all these little stuffed animals and stuff and it's really neat. But yeah, so this is my frog and toad and they're just knit in some random Madeline Tosh yarn that I had sitting around. And my embroidery is an amazing and I didn't spend a lot of time <laughs> making sure that they were perfect, which I love. <laughs> I love that they're imperfect and they're just two naked amphibians waiting for <sighs> their clothing and they're just keeping each other warm and hanging out. Um, I love them so much. I love that Frog is like kind of angry at me for being created, but he's super happy now that he has his best bud. They just love each other and that's all that matters. And I love their little relationship. Okay. <laughs> so that is my frog and toad. They were a little complicated to make, to be honest. They're not super, super simple. Um, they take concentration and, you know, they're, they're a little work in progress. Not, not the hardest pattern I've ever made, ever. Um, not at all. But they have some tricky things, especially, you know, she has you, she has you cut in um, an unravel for the eyes. So you're doing some cutting with the yarn and stitches. Um, I was really lazy and I didn't do a provisional cast on for my backs for the little opening. And so they have little, oh, it's not gonna focus. They have little bumps on their, on the back of their heads, but that's just cause I'm too lazy to, to, like I said, make them look perfect. I'm really happy with how these guys turned out. They have a lot of personality, a lot of character, and I think that's what's really neat about this pattern is that uh, no matter who knits it, it's always going to be a little bit different than the original. No one's going to make an exact duplicate. Um, so, super fun. My work in progress is obviously knitting them some clothes. Um, I am kind of following like her exact color palette, especially for Toad's little jumpsuit. So I have one leg done. Um, I just started this like last night, <laughs> so I'm just using Knit Picks palette for this, um, and it's just so cute, and I love this, and I just want to make Frog and Toad all day long. That's all I want to do, and I want them to be my buddies, and I want them to hang out with me, and they make me feel very loved and comforted. 
So the next finished object, um, which is going to be really hard for you guys to see because I'm wearing it, are my second pair of Burnside bibs. I had a bunch of this leftover fabric. Um, it's just cotton quilting fabric from the back of my Alice in Wonderland quilt, which is over here. And it is a very vibrant black and white stripe and it hurts your eyes a lot. So I thought one of the fun things to do would be kind of tie dye over it, sprinkle splashy paint on top of it in order to just kind of like doll down that crazy stripe feeling that you get <laughs> when you looked at this fabric. And I think I was semi successful. Um, I still call these clown pants every single time I put them on, although they look really cute worn. I think they look cute. Um, they kind of make me look like I've been painting all day and you know I should have a paintbrush tucked behind my ear. Um, <clears throat> but that's also just due in part to the Burnside Bibs pattern which is adorable and I think it's I think it's one of my all-time favorite patterns and if I could probably make roughly two more pairs because I have a, a linen pair I'd love a corduroy pair and then I'd love to try to see if I could make like a fancy pair um, like something that you could wear to a wedding like maybe out of like chiffon or silk I don't know I don't know fabrics <laughs> Um, so nevertheless, it was a great adaptation because what I ended up doing was turning them into shorts because I didn't have enough uh, fabric to make them long, which is totally fine with me because now I have a super fun little like summer outfit to wear. So that's great. And I don't really have much else to say than that. Um, I do want to mention that this pattern, which is called Burnside Bibs, is from the pattern maker is called So House 7. So as usual, all of that information is going to be down below, so make sure you click that because you'll also find information for all of the other projects that I have been working on. Because I often forget to say what yarn I used or who the pattern was written by, um, and I want to make sure that you definitely have access to those things. Um, I guess one of the things I should mention about the construction is I cut out all of my pattern pieces and then I went ahead and tie-dyed them or dyed them whatever you want to call it, painted them. I used fabric dye specifically, like tie-dye fabric dye. So I did that to all of the pieces and then I went ahead and assembled it. So those are my Burnside bibs. So my other work in progress that is for knitting, I'm just knitting up a pair of socks. Super simple, <laughs> nothing ex crazy exciting. I am knitting them inside out. The purl side will be the purl side will be the true side and it's just going to have one little knit stitch running all the way down uh, to the toe just because I think that'll be a nice little accent. Now this is an ombre yarn. Um, my best friend got it for me for my birthday or Christmas. We exchanged gifts at a really weird time so I can't... This was for my birthday. The socks, she, she knit me a pair of socks and she gave me those and those were for Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing super crazy about that. It's just my own pattern that I'm making up as I go along. And uh, the yarn is from Knit Picks and the yarn colorway is actually called BFF. Um, and it's their like double colorway. So you get two skeins that match each other, which I think is really cute. So that way your socks can, can match. We're moving along really well and really fast. It's because I don't have that much to <laughs> share. So uh, the next little project that I have is all cut out. It's all ready to go. Um, I'm going to be making my friend a little pencil case. Uh, we'll see how this goes because I think my zipper is too short and I really don't want to have to change my zipper because this matches so well with the whole color scheme, but I do have other options. But I have to change it. I'm hoping that turns out. I should be able to do that today, actually. So I just cut it out yesterday. Um, I'd love to have it finished and sent out to her so she can have her new pencil case. It's kind of funny because people ask me to make them stuff all the time and uh, she was really cute because she was like, you don't have to do it. Like I can just go buy one. And I'm like, but here's the thing, like I, I'm busy, but I'm also not busy. <laughs> and I just want all the projects right now. I want to do everything. 
So it's a great little distraction and something so I don't really have any time to sit around and mope about my life or anything. I, I don't really know what to call this sort of segment of projects. These are projects that don't really have, have to get done. It's just sort of like, eventually they'll get done. I just found out I have a hole in my favorite pair of socks. I actually have two holes. I'm really sad about this because <laughs> it was kind of a surprise to me. Um, so I was really bummed when I saw that I had that. So I need to darn these socks. Um, while the, the second one doesn't have a hole yet, it's, it's starting. So I need to darn and reinforce those as well as finish darning my original favorite pair of socks, which I had darned, I had darned one hole, but darning, darning kind of takes a long time and it's a little bit of a process and you have to have the right mindset to just sit there and just chill out and get together with your needles and find the right yarn if you don't have leftover yarn from your project. So yeah. Both of my favorite pairs of socks. I will get to that eventually. It's just not anything urgent because I have, you know, like 10 pairs of hand knit socks that I can wear. Um, but it is something that I am just adding to my list that I eventually want to do. Now, as for my next sewing endeavor, after my little pencil case, um, I had originally written down for a project for me to sew, was to sew a dress to wear to my cousin's wedding. Um, but then I went and I looked for, I looked for patterns. I didn't really find anything that I wanted to make. I looked for fabric and I didn't really find any fabric that like really got me excited. Um, so I kind of scrapped that idea, but I still walked away from Joan Fabrics with fabric because it's just how life goes. <laughs> um, and surprise, surprise, it's linen and surprise, surprise, it's pink. So yeah so what i found is a really nice pattern on etsy um of these pajama this pajama set and that's what i'm going to be making with these so again this is just something to do in the future it's not anything that i'm like gonna bust out and start working on right away um it's just like oh hey i think i could start a sewing project i think i have time for that i think i have the energy to do something like that sometimes i just really like to have a little sewing project it's just for me it's just fun to work on and of course it's amazing to have something to wear once you're done with it that's just like the best feeling <laughs> so that is really all there is for actual physical projects that I am working on now <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm not working on stuff <laughs> um, I think that the like <clears throat> lack of knitting that I have been doing is mainly due to the fact that I just have so much creative energy right now and I have been pouring all of that energy into my Etsy shop right now. I think TikTok is a huge proponent of that, uh, mainly due to the fact that I am now on small business TikTok, so I see everything that everybody else is making, I see the success that other people are having, and that is just driving me forward. <laughs> so at the end of January, I did a shop update and I put out a lot of new products that I just have to admit, I'm, I'm really proud of. I'm really proud of what I've made. I feel like since the beginning, way back in like 2012, when I started my Etsy shop, um, I finally reached sort of the point where I wanna be. Like I have a cohesive, idea in mind of what I want my shop to look like. I have a cohesive idea of how I want to be sending my stuff to people. And what I'm really enjoying is that all of my products are not a huge investment, whether time-wise, whether shipping-wise, whether like phys physically product-wise. Um, so I don't have to feel like there's a great loss if things are just sitting in my shop for a while. Um, you know, I don't have to feel like there's a great loss if I suddenly become too busy and I don't have time to promote or to work on my shop. Um, so it's been really fun. It's been really great to explore. Um, of course there are days when I'm like so excited about it. And then there are days where I'm just like, I'm so defeated. <laughs> 
but it's part of that that plays into social media and how social media just really beats you up about um, not looking like other businesses and I try to remind myself that for the most part that's because I'm not ready I'm not ready to have hundreds of orders a day um, you know I'm not even ready to have like more than two orders a week <laughs> so I can definitely fulfill those but I think that if if people were to suddenly start flooding into my shop I would freak out a little bit um, so it's really nice just to have those sort of one-offs and to um, just be sending stuff out and to make it really special um, and I really really appreciate all of you who have purchased something from my shop it means so much to me not so much in the way of like I really need that money it's more just really fulfilling for my art and for what I'm creating and sort of the direction that I want to be going especially with this business and that it might have potential in the future and by future I mean like maybe next year <laughs> so because I know that once I start work um, this year is gonna go by so fast and I just don't know how much time and energy I will have to be pouring into it to create new products I have some really fun future ideas for it um, I would like to talk a little bit about that um, because some of you might know that I have written knitting patterns before and some of them you can find on Ravelry under my, like, I think it's just gray squade. I don't think it's making useless things or something. I'll put a link down below <laughs> what it is. Um, and most of my patterns are free. Um, and way back when I originally like was doing Etsy, 2012 2013 I was knitting these small little um, figurines and miniatures and I would really like to start doing that again but I want to have them be available as patterns um, and then eventually as kits that you could purchase so you could get all of the little things that you need because you need such a small amount of yarn and you need just such tiny little bits of little bobs that maybe you might not have lying around and plus it would make great gifts for knitters and friends. I'm really excited to start working on that. I don't have anything to show you yet other than printed patterns <laughs> that I need to, um, I need to re-knit, I need to edit, I need to fix them up. So you could look forward to that um, probably within the next month or so. I'll have one or two of those available, at least as patterns. We'll see about the kits. That might be way, way later down the road. Um, but then I also have some other patterns for more sculptural items that I want to be making. Um, and I think that that is something that I'm really excited to do because I've had these items like s just sort of sitting around and sitting in the back of my head for years and years. So it'd be really fun to finally get to share that all with you. Okay, so I guess we have now moved into life update stuff and I just kind of wanted to share with you some other things that I was, that are like going on that pertain to my creativity and things that I'm making and working on. So I've started my final semester of school, um, which if you didn't know, I'm going to school just to finish my associate's degree. And while that seems like not a very big deal, it is a very big deal to me because I never thought I would be going back to school ever. <laughs> so it feels really good. Um, so one of the classes I'm taking is a drawing class. Uh, again, which is something I never thought I would ever do, but I find that it's really helping me. It's really helping my confidence in artwork, especially to draw in front of people, to be critiqued, um, and then also just to have guidance and to be learning these techniques that I should have been practicing and learning a long time ago as an artist. But um, sometimes you just need that that out that outside push. You need somebody else pushing you along and, um, you know, having to be graded on everything that, that definitely helps motivate you to get things done and to learn. I'm really enjoying that as, as much as you can. It's like a love-hate relationship. I like hate it so much, but I'm also really enjoying it. It's like working out. That's how I remind myself to think about it. You know, you're working out, you're training yourself, and you're just going to be better for it because either it's just going to make you feel really good or you're going to get stronger whatever however you want to work out that metaphor <laughs> and then uh, another fun little future thing that i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be painting a mural for my mother-in-law 
I have no idea what it's gonna look like yet. I still have to go visit and take pictures of the room and the wall that she wants it on. And then we need to kind of sit down and discuss how like complex we wanna make it. Um, and it's gonna be for, it's gonna be for her grandkids to kind of hang out in. So it's gotta be kid themed and just trying to think of what, what, what I can do within like my skill set. Um, and how I would translate that onto a big wall. So that'll be something really exciting and fun, but I have tons of artistic people in my family who can help me. My little brother is a painter and an artist, and my dad's a painter, as in like painting walls and houses. So I have a lot of good resources to dig into as far as that goes. And that just sort of ties into uh, just being in this place of like, I don't wanna say no to these new experiences and um, I definitely have time to incorporate all of this into my life right now. Uh, so I don't feel like by saying yes that I'm overextending myself on some of these things. Um, I mean, frankly, I'm enjoying all of it, so <laughs> that's good. <sighs> I think we covered most of it. I think that's almost everything that we needed to discuss uh, for me to catch you up on. You know, we talked about how YouTube, my YouTube channel will probably mostly be podcast episodes from here on out. Hopefully, Lord willing, um, I can bite the bullet. I can find a tripod that works for me and so we can get some better lighting and filming um, setups. And next, I would just like to uh, shout out to my Etsy shop. Um, if you'd like to check it out, it's linked down below. I sell lots of stationary goods, so I have greeting cards, I have sticker sets, I have original artwork, and I also sell a lot of digital downloads and printables. One of them is actually a knitting planner project page, so if you want to check that out, you can. So I guess to wrap this video up, first of all, I would like to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate people who decide to spend their time with me. If you would like to see more of these or to be updated when I post a new video, just hit subscribe and follow me. And if you like this video, please feel free to like it as well as comment down below. Please let me know what you're making, what you enjoyed about this video um, or any of the projects that you saw. If you're knitting one of those projects or sewing one of those, let me know. I want to know. <laughs> um, I really, really enjoy getting comments from you guys because it reminds me that there are people out there listening and um, it's just great to connect with you people because that is one of the reasons why I make videos and I put them out there. Um, again, is I want to make connections with other artists and other creators and other knitters and other sewers and <laughs> other people who have interests similar to mine. So, okay. Well, I hope you have an absolutely marvelous day. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.